Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, this beautiful day. How you guys and girls are doing? Damn, I've been gone for a while and it's so hot in this in this country right now in Sweden. I'm going crazy, so I haven't made a lot of videos. I've had my little, um, what do you call it, a little break from making videos for a while. But I'm back to it a little bit. I think I'll make a few. And today I just want to I just wanna say that this video is basically a stepping stone. For the next video so it's it's not a, a really big tutorial in itself but it will make a lot of more a lot more sense in the next video when we talk about um, functions and stuff like that or in the upcoming videos but uh, the importance of this thing I'm going to show you today is really important while working with functions to understand what happens is very important so don't freak out too much it will seem like the huge Maybe to some of you will be like a huge problem. You don't understand it at all. But I'll try to explain everything. I'll try to visualize it using good old paint. But let's just get started. All right. So basically a computer's memory is like cells like this, right? Basically small cells. It doesn't exactly look like this, but they have addresses. So this is X123. This is maybe X5 something something. And, you know, the memory, there's a bunch of more. Imagine a bunch of more cells between these. And the computer stores things wherever it feels like, basically. Wherever it sees it fit, it will store things in the memory and remove things from there. Uh, so what happens if I create an integer i equals 20? We'll create an i somewhere in memory, a variable, an integer, and it will have the value 20. Now what we're going to talk about today is something called a reference. And references are basically just that what the name implies it's a reference to something else so it's not a variable in itself it's more of a a shortcut to some other variable all right and this is really useful you might not see the use of it right now here in this video that's what I mean so you'll see the use of it in the next video much better and there are two different things that you use basically a lot in programming so if you want to get good at C++ references pointers Pointers, oh god, what is he doing? Okay, <laughs> pointers are probably the most important thing, and dynamic memory, which we'll talk about later. Don't worry about it. But references is like the first step to understanding how memory and stuff works. So you'll be playing around in memory a lot. So understanding it, the static memory and the dynamic memory is really important. But a uh, we'll again we'll get to that later. So I created my integer variable here. This is a static variable, so it's created in compile time basically when I build a program it will be created and it will exist until the end so I cannot say delete this in the middle of the program it doesn't work that way it will be there forever until it's ended anyway uh, that didn't really have a lot to do with this video but still at least you know what that means uh, so I want to create a reference now when you create a reference you need to give it a type so this is what you need you need a type reference operator basically and um, initial value that's really important all right this is really important because a reference cannot change after its first uh, referencing to something so once I tell it okay this is what you're gonna be pointing to and this is what this is the variable you are referenced to you can't change pointers can change that's the difference here pointers can change and we'll make a big video about pointers and references later where I tell you all the differences and stuff but for now just remember that's the big that's a big difference you can't change operators or you can't change references you can change pointers but still we'll only look at uh, references today so this is how you create a reference you write this ampersand symbol after the type that you wanted to reference so obviously we have an integer i we wanna uh, kinda point to I can make a double d 20.3 we cannot reference D here because this is an integer reference it only references integers so we'll give it a value so or we'll just say R equals nothing well I'll show you the error messages so it's gonna say R requires an initializer which means it needs something to start off with this because it can't remember it can't change after it's created it can only be set to something while it's when it's created so we have to give it something from the start so I'll say okay R is I so you're like, what the hell is this? Oh my god, dude, I don't even understand what the hell's going on. But an integer reference is not a real variable. Now, r equals i here means that it won't be a copy of i. 
rather R will become I. So I can change I through writing I or R. All right. Both of these names give me access to I's spot in memory. So what happens in here is remember at this point in memory I is 20. This is where I lives. But here is the home of R, our reference. You probably can't see this really well. There you go. So I and R. Remember the address is really important. So if you know I isn't holding the address to something else. It's holding its own value 20 and it has it reserves a big size for itself now I'll show you int max and stuff it's something cool you, I'll just show you that really quickly after I explain this but so references don't hold values they hold different variable addresses so we once we said r equals i what the computer did what was it stored the address of i which is 1 to x123 in here so every time we say r equals something after this line here it will go oh what's our holding since it's a reference okay x123 let's go jump to that space in memory and change whatever is there so it will go here and it will change the value here we cannot say r equals if we had another integer int oh this is a good thing I can show you int i k equals 30 so if I say r equals k this will not become a reference to k rather it will take the value 30 and it will put it in i now i know this might sound a little complicated to some of you because but i'll show you all of this so let me see std c out i new line so let me just show you what's going on here if i print out i obviously we're gonna get 20 i equals 20 i haven't changed it yet if i say i equals 10 before this line what's gonna happen it's going to print out 10. Am I right? But if remember, I'm printing out i still, but if I say r equals 10 and then I print out i, our integer, what's going to happen? Oh, it's going to print out 10 because our reference is, is basically an alias to i. So whenever I change it, i itself will change. Obviously, I can print out r as well like this and we'll get 10 because basically when I'm printing out R I'm going into the address it's holding and I'm printing out I now if I say R equals K here alright and I print out I we're gonna get 30 30 see what's happening here is R is a reference to I like I said and it will get the value of K, which is 30 and we'll print out I which is 30 all right so that's basically it. now if I if I say R equals 10 after this K assignment here we won't be changing K obviously all right so I'm gonna print out K here so if, if some of you think that it's a reference to K it's not K is still 30 even if I change R to 10 so we're still referencing I see how it can't change during runtime or, or or during like not runtime what am I saying it can't change after it's got an initial value so that's a good way to look at it um, and that's great now the use of this obviously you can't see in this video like I said and um, there's uh, another type called pointers which I probably just talked about uh, I don't remember if I did but still pointers will come to another video but this is a good start and obviously I can make an a double reference call it dr and I'll call I'll put it to D all right so if I print out dr we'll basically at 20.3 which is a double so that's that's basically how that works you can make references for any type of variable your own classes later we'll talk about classes as well don't worry about it, don't freak out but just remember this for the next video this is really important so you want to know this and it it might be a little complicated like I said but just remember this whole address holding thing and how that works I just want to show you some cool stuff before we leave because this video is kind of short um, let me just do this okay so I want to show you how big a, an integer can can be so usually we always hold 
20 and 30 and stuff like that but what's the biggest value a integer can be now that is uh, found by typing in int max which is something it's like a constant value which the computer keeps track of so that's the biggest number an integer can be this huge number right here and the thing is if I if I show you how memory works because if we make an I 20 here with the value 20 it will reserve enough bytes so it can hold this huge number so it won't care if we have a smaller number or anything it will reserve as much memory as that variable type can hold so basically even if we're holding a little it's gonna make a huge box for us which can hold that big big number because it's not dynamic like that it's static this whole cell will be able to keep that huge number so that's kinda how that works and pointers and stuff they help us kinda delete that and, and keep track of that um, uh, during runtime and that's that's what if you want to be a good programmer later on you need to really nail dynamic memory and pointers and, and references and stuff like that and we'll talk about that but you really need to nail that it's really important because usually you don't want to create new variables and keep them for long you want to create them and delete them but like I said this I will stay here until the end of the program even if we don't need it anymore so that's very static it's not dynamic We'll talk about that, like I said, later on. But just remember that it's a good thing to know from right now. So once you see it later, you'll be like, oh, okay, that's what's up. So yeah, just remember that. But basically, this is references for you. Um, that's the key points that we talked about. And just try to try to not be too freaked out about it. And we'll keep talking about it in the coming videos. Anyway, thanks for watching. Best of luck. Take care, and hopefully I don't die from heat stroke. But if I don't, I'll make another video soon, and I'll see you guys in that one, all right? Peace out. Best of luck. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.